Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about Insta360's studio on a desktop for complete noobs. So if you're completely brand new to reframing 360 videos with your Insta360 camera, I'm gonna walk through everything you need to know about Insta360's desktop editing studio, how to reframe your 360 footage so you know exactly how to create really good videos from your 360 camera like this. I use my Insta360 X3 camera almost every day. I think it's a really good camera, super, really, super versatile, and absolutely love the high quality videos I can get from this. It's all well and good knowing how to use this camera because obviously it's a 360 camera, so you don't really have to point and shoot. You can literally just turn it on record and you'll most likely capture the shots you want. The power in creating good videos comes in the editing. So we're gonna jump over to my computer screen now and I'm gonna walk you through all the features of Insta360 Studio and how to edit great 360 videos. Okay, so I've downloaded Insta360 Studio and I've opened it up and this is the desktop you'll see. And all I've done now is brought in and imported my videos from my 360 camera. So if you've not already done that, you'll literally want to plug your micro SD card into your computer using a micro SD card reader, or you can plug your camera directly into your computer, drag the files over, and you'll notice that when you do start importing your files, you will have two videos for each clip. So because there's two cameras on the Insta360 lens or camera, it records and downloads two files. But don't worry, all you have to do is double click on one of the videos and it will import them both into Insta360 Studio. So all I've done here is double tap on the video that I want to import or dragged it in, whichever is easiest, and it appears on your timeline here. And this is basically our editing suite. On the left here, we have our media pool, if you like. So any clips that you import will end up on the left. And you can see here, we can change the look of this so we can have it almost like a thumbnail type picture, a bigger picture, or we can have just like a, a list like this is what I prefer. I like to keep things nice and concise. And then we can also navigate to camera files. We can also navigate to favorites and exports and look at our export history if we've exported anything. And then this is our main editing window. So as you can see here, we've got our video. And then at the bottom here, we've got our timeline and all the different tools to edit with. And then on the right here, we've got some other tools which we'll jump into shortly. So first things first, we want to determine which part of the clip that we want to use in our video because some people may just want to use a segment of their 360 footage. They may not want to use all the clip. Some people will, some people won't. So what we want to do is we want to click the space bar. I'm on a MacBook here or click the play button and you can scrub through your footage and find the section of video you want to use. This is me at a bike park in Austria. Let's just use that jump for now. So let's use the first section here. And we'll click this button here. So this is markers trim start. Or you can press command and the left uh, bracket and it will bring that to the start. And then we'll set our end point. So I land the jump and that's my end point there. It's about a 10 second clip. Now, what we want to do with our 360 footage is, obviously this will, this will be different to everyone, but because we're editing mountain bike point of view footage, we want the viewer to feel like they're riding the bike when they're watching the video. So how we can do this is we can use keyframes and we can use the keyframes to follow the mountain biker down the track. And if we, if we just play the clip now without any keyframes, you'll notice that the camera's kind of all over the place and it doesn't really follow where the mountain biker is riding really, because we can do a much better job than this. So what we wanna do is we want to, like we can click and hold and pull this around where we want our first frame to be. And we can also use two fingers on our tracking pad. We can zoom in and out. And if we add a keyframe here at the start, this is the first frame, it brings up this window here. So we've also got these different field of views. We've got crystal ball, tiny, tiny planet, natural views. That's like basically a video where you've got no distortion. But I like the default view. And from here, you can kind of refine what your footage looks like using these five tabs here. So we've got pan, tilt, roll, field of view control, and distortion control. And by pulling each of these around, we can really 
customize how our shot looks. Okay. And once you're happy with that, you want to play the clip and we're going to add a keyframe at the start and the end of every point that we want our camera to be moving and transitioning through the shot. So keyframes, I'm going to now, because we're riding around a corner, I'm going to put a keyframe at the end of the first corner. And if we play this back now, you'll see what the camera will do. It will transition between keyframe one and keyframe two. So it kind of follows how I was riding around that corner. And then we want to do the same for the next one. So we go to the end of the next corner and we'll straighten that up where we want it. And we'll add another keyframe, click here. Or you can press Command and K, which is the shortcut. And we'll put that back again. We'll see what it looks like. Awesome. And we'll straighten that up a little bit there because it wobbled a bit out of alignment. Awesome. So I'm fairly happy with that. Now, there's another way we can do this as well. We can use something called directional lock. So if I just delete these keyframes now, and I'll show what directional lock does. Directional lock is on, on the stabilization tab here. Now if we turn it off, right, I'll just show you what happens now. This is directional lock turned off. I'll play the clip. You can see there, the 360 camera isn't doing any movement at all. It's kind of locked in one position. But if we now turn directional lock on and play the same clip, so we'll just face it forwards, you'll kind of see Insta360's app tries to follow where you're going. And this can be a useful tool for some scenarios, not all scenarios, but for, for this sort of stuff, for mountain biking and anything point of view like skiing or any action sports it'll come in really handy but if you want to get a little bit more um, advanced and in tune with your clips then I probably wouldn't recommend using direction a lot but it's there to use and I use it quite a lot with my clips and we can also use deep track as well so this is where you can actually track a subject uh, this is really handy if you are doing like selfie style videos and you're holding the camera and you want the 360 camera and your video to focus just on you or a single point. It'll actually lock onto a target and it'll follow that target. But I don't really use that in in these sorts of clips because it's not necessary, but that might be necessary to you. And then obviously time shift is where we can add um, motion and speed to our clips. But again, we're not gonna touch that in this video, but that is an option and I will explain that in another video. We can also adjust the aspect ratio here as well. So depending on where you want to use your footage, We've got 16 by nine, so this is what a YouTube video looks like. We've also got nine by 16, so this is perfect for Instagram stories, TikTok videos, Instagram reels, things like that. We've also got one by one, so a square. We've also got four by three again for social media and 2.35.1, 5 which I've never really used, but super wide. I'm not too sure where you would use that unless you really want something super wide. Anyway. So there's all different options there we can play with. Now on the right hand tab here as well, we've got all these stitching options. So if you're using any Vince 360 accessories like the sticky lens guard or a dive case when you're underwater, when you're editing in here, you'll want to switch the relevant option on because the stitching line will be affected. If I turn the sticky lens guard on now and I don't have a sticky lens guard on, you'll see it adds a really strange... Um, another level to my footage almost, see there? Um, whereas if you had the sticky lens guard on, that would, wouldn't happen. Same with dive case as well. It'll do some weird stuff, but we don't have a dive case, so we just flip normal. Stitching optimization. I actually never really touch this at all. I just literally leave it on optimal flow stitching, and you can calibrate your stitching as well, just to realign things. Again, I haven't really played too much. That's quite advanced stuff. I, I just haven't really touched it. Media processing. So you can do a little bit of color grading to your footage in Insta360 Studio, but I prefer to use DaVinci Resolve, another program to do color grading, which I will do another video on. But you can do some basic color grading in here. We can add color plus so we can make our videos a little bit more saturated and we can add a little bit more clarity to them. Just, just to change our image, images up a bit. 
Then we've got true audio as well, so we can reduce noise. So if you're outside and you don't have any covers on your microphones, then you can noise reduce things. Voice focus, if you are wanting the camera to focus on the voice in your footage, that's the option for you, or you just turn it off. I don't usually have it on. There's a logo option if you want to add logos to your clips. I don't know why you'd want to add a logo, but you can if you want to do that. And then we can create different project management tabs here just to organize your footage. And then we've obviously got an information tab with all the information about your clip. So let's just say now we have edited our 360 footage and we're happy with how it is and we want to export it so we can then either upload to social media or do some further editing in another piece of software. You want to click this yellow square button here, which is the export button. And it'll bring up this box. You probably want to name your file something you can remember, so. Slabbing, riding video. And then you want to, the file path is where the video will be saved to, so you may make sure that is where you want it. Parameters for presets, again, you can create presets, so you can just come in and select this if you're exporting a number of different clips. And bitrate is basically the quality of your video. So. Some people will just export this at the highest number. So if you look at the file size though, this will change based on the size of your bitrate. Resolution, I would keep this at 2160 by 3840. That is the resolution you want for this 360 camera. Encoding format, if you're uploading social media, so YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, I would keep it to H.264. That's just the tried and true method, the one that works the best with the social media platforms. You can go ProRes, but then you obviously you'll see the file size will jump up and the actual gaining quality probably won't be that much. And you also notice you'll lose your bitrate uh, adjustability. And then that's literally all I would do. And I would click start, input, start export and it would start exporting my file. And then from there, I can take it into another piece of software to edit further, or I can simply upload it straight to social media if that's what I want to do. So I hope this video was useful, guys. Um, if you've got any questions about Insta360 Studio or editing in general, pop them below and I'll get back to you. And if you want to grab all my Insta360 camera settings, I'll put a link in the description to my cheat sheet, which will just give you all the settings that you can use, depending on where you're shooting in different environments. You just literally plug them in and you are good to go. So I hope that was useful. See you in the next video.